Hey, Dr. Bones back again. Wanted to talk a little bit about forces. Mentioned Newton's laws of motion, inertia. What about the second law? Force equals mass times acceleration. Of course, we all understand the concept of weight. Weight is mass times gravity. You go to the moon, it's a different gravitational attraction than the Earth, about one-sixth the gravity of Earth. So you wanted to lose weight, you could go to the moon and lose weight, but you wouldn't lose any mass. Ah, speaking of going to the moon, what about a rocket, for example? If I wanted to launch a rocket, how can I get a rocket off the ground? Well, I need a tremendous force, we call it thrust. Fact of the matter is, there's an explosion in the rocket, goes out the nozzle of the rocket, it's hot gases pushing against hot gases. So once you've left the atmosphere, well, it's still hot gases pushing against hot gases in the nozzle. So you don't need an atmosphere to get a rocket to move throughout space. Whereas when, in one of our next segments, we're going to talk about airplanes, aerodynamics, you do need a fluid for the airplane to flow through, in this case, air. But a rocket can go anywhere. So here we've got a rocket. I'm going to give it a little thrust here, see what we can do. Whoa, pretty neat. These are kind of fun things you can buy in your local store and go outside. These probably go about 30, 40 feet. Let's try another one here. Whoa, there's a good one. And you've got these pint-sized ones as well. I'm going to launch one over here. Here we go, ready end. Oh. Some of these are a little bit better because you can put a bigger pressure in here, but again, gases pressing against gases. Oh, wow, that's a good one. Let's try another one here. Up, oh, coming right at you. Okay, so thrust. Thrust is what the rocket has in the engine. Moving out to space, I've got a balloon rocket here, and this is kind of an interesting one you can do at home. It's the same principle, except we're going to blow up a balloon. Here is my apparatus. I've got a contraption where you don't really want the balloon to just go flying everywhere, so we've got a little string, and this will ride along the string. This is our rocket. Here, by the way, is the nozzle of the rocket. Okay, so this is where the gases are going to be pressing against gas molecules, and the exit here, this we call the nozzle, and it will propel this rocket forward. So I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to go uphill a little. These are kind of neat. You can do these things. This, this setup here is such that when you do blow up the balloon, gravity is pulling it down, so you don't want it to be just flopping all over, so you have a little wire in the front, and either wire or some lightweight paper on the sides. So here I go. I'm going to blow up this balloon and then launch it off into space. Be careful with the balloons, though. Sometimes they blow up and explode, but here we go. Okay, so this gas is going to be coming out the nozzle. I'm going to just pull the string tight, and let's adjust the front here. So this setup holds the balloon from falling all over the place, and as it loses air, it will start to flop around, but this will hold it in place, and there we go. Oh, there we go. Launching into space. Let's try that one more time here. Oh, that's pretty, pretty big there. I don't want to blow it up too much. Be careful for sharp edges. You don't want to explode your balloon before you get off the ground, and it's... Yeah, there we go. So that probably could have gone at least 20 or 30 feet. So you might want to try that out. Kind of a neat way to talk about thrust and forces and give Newton credit for Newton's second law and his third law, action-reaction. So I'll see you in the next segment. Take care.